Hello my dear carbon based lifeforms, I bid you welcome once more to the Dolbor channel. Today we will have a new tutorial, this time we will be creating our own custom weapons for vintage masters of the universe figures. We need to use a plastic post, this could come either from the injection tree of a plastic miniature model, the steerer of a coffee cup or any other cylindric piece you might like. Using a thick sheet of sterine plastic, we will mount the cylinder inside of a sandwich, created with two plastic walls that will keep it safe for the rest of our work. The basic shape for our pistol is that of a box that is larger on one side, and we want to give it a stock and some other low detail elements, so to keep it in line with the vintage Motu weapons. As part of the details we decided to include in our pistol, we want to place a number of groups by the edge of a cannon. We will cut strips and fix them using super glue onto the main body of the weapon. In order to make sure that the groups are following a straight line, we would use a marker to guide us on their placements. It is quite important to sand down every piece that we add onto the main body so to make sure that there are not misplaced pieces or segments that appear to be poorly placed. Once we get to a pleasing general form for the pistol, we will create a cavity that will receive the trigger. We will use epoxy clay to cover holes and detail the needing sections. Once the clay has dried up, we will use the articulation disc of a 4 inches figure in order to create our trigger. You can choose a different form for your trigger depending on your own design and then we'll use the rotary tool to create a cylindrical space that will hold this new piece. We will attach the trigger and other elements such as energy cartridges, supports for the stock or a sight depending on the design you want to recreate. As we have placed all the elements, we go back to epoxy clay in order to cover possible holes and imperfections, up to the point we get to a unified appearance. Once dried up, we paint it with grey primer and start working on the mold. We need to place the pieces we want to reproduce over a carton base, which we will later cover with the school clay that will receive the pieces to be copied. We build a carton wall that is twice as tall as the tallest piece in our originals and attach it to the base using white glue and painter's tape in order to avoid leakages. We make a number of groups that will help us close the mold halves and pour silicone rubber with 10% of catalyst. We let it dry for a whole night, remove the base from the mold and spray both the pieces and the rubber with grey primer in order to repeat the process for the second half. The next day our mold will be ready to be cast with resin. Polyurethane resin normally mixes in a one-to-one -one ratio for its two components. We first pour and use a toothpick to make sure that every detail gets covered in the first half of a mold. We let it dry and repeat the process in the second half. As the resin nears its hardened state, we place the first half over the mold to obtain complete pieces. And that's it! We can now reproduce as many weapons as we would like to. Thanks for your time, my dear Carbon Based Lifo. Give us a like, hit that subscribe button already, buy one of our products, and get unique benefits for following us in Patreon. Peace, and see you soon.